April 3, 2024, News Report 1. On April 3, 2024, Liberty Times reported that the Central Disaster Response Center of Taiwan announced that as of 10 p.m. on April 3, a strong earthquake measuring 7.2 magnitude had occurred in Hualien, resulting in nine deaths, 1,011 injuries, and 143 people trapped. The epicenter of the earthquake was located near the coast of Hualien County, with a depth of 15.5 kilometers. As of that evening, there had been over 200 aftershocks, including 101 aftershocks of magnitude 4 or above. The Central Weather Bureau stated that not all the seismic energy had been released, and there may be aftershocks of magnitude 6.5 to 7 in the next three days. Of the nine fatalities, three were mountaineers hit by falling rocks on the trails of Taroko National Park, and another was a truck driver killed on the Suhua Highway. Another victim was found in a tilted building. It was reported that after the earthquake, more than 1,000 people were trapped in Taroko National Park in Hualien, including mountaineers, park hotel staff, and other tourists. Taroko National Park announced a five-day closure for thorough search and rescue operations. Four minivans from the Taroko Silver Gold Hotel went missing after the earthquake, with an estimated 50 people on board. Rescue personnel will rush to the Jolu Tunnel in the Wine area for rescue operations early on April 4. The Jolu Tunnel is a scenic spot in Taroko National Park where accidents have occurred frequently in previous years. The earthquake disrupted roads and railways to Hualien, and the Taiwan military dispatched C-130 transport planes for rescue. Airlines increased flights between Taipei and Hualien. Former Taiwan President Lai Ching-te visited Hualien and stated that rescue work is a top priority and must be launched as soon as possible. The central government will fully assist local governments in post-disaster reconstruction. The earthquake has affected Taiwan's high-tech industry, including the shutdown and evacuation of employees from the factories of TSMC and Lianhua Electronics. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida expressed condolences to Taiwan and stated that Japan will support Taiwan's post-disaster reconstruction. The Japan Meteorological Agency reported tsunamis observed in Okinawa and Yanaguni Island, but no disasters were reported. China Earthquake Network Center stated that the earthquake was 7.3 magnitude and affected Fujian, Jiangxi, and other places, leading to the suspension of railways in Guangzhou. Taiwan's response to the earthquake demonstrates the capabilities of a mature nation, with various departments orderly carrying out rescue operations. In contrast, every natural disaster in China involves human factors, and the CCP often conceals facts, restricts rescue access, and does not support civilian rescue efforts. News Report 2 Former Taiwan President Ma Ying-jeou continued his visit to Guangdong, China, when a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck Taiwan. Ma mentioned the earthquake in his speech after the visit, expressing hope for everyone's safety. This earthquake is the largest in Taiwan in 25 years and has already caused nine deaths. Some believe that as a former president, Ma's brief statement was not appropriate. He should have at least issued a statement or suspended his schedule for the day to visit and comfort the victims. However, he did not do so and was criticized for being indifferent. His visit to China was also questioned, suggesting that he lacked common sense. During his visit, Ma mentioned the history of the Republic of China, ROC, but did not mention the ROC at the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall. News Report 3 Liberty Times reported that Raytheon, the United States, recently won a contract from the U.S. Department of Defense to upgrade Taiwan's Les Han radar station. The Les Han radar station, which was put into operation in 2013, is equipped with the world's only 360-degree detection radar system called the Sanmian Lujiao radar. This radar system covers the entire reconnaissance range of China, enabling Taiwan to have a clear understanding of the actions of the People's Liberation Army on the Chinese mainland, which is of great significance to Taiwan's early warning and response. 
The U.S. Department of Defense did not disclose the amount of the contract to upgrade the Les Han radar station, but the Taiwan Ministry of National Defense began budgeting 1.66 billion new Taiwan dollars annually for five consecutive years last year for the upgrade and maintenance of the Les Han radar station, totaling 517 million U.S. dollars. Sources said that after the upgrade, the Les Han radar station will not only reduce the time of radar monitoring but also improve the recognition speed, effectively grasp the direction and potential landing point of incoming missiles, help Taiwan's Patriot Air Defense missile system intercept threatening missiles, and release missiles that may fall into open areas. The upgraded Les Han radar station will provide data to Taiwan Sky Bao Series anti-ship missile system for source attack on the People's Liberation Army. News Report 4 The Jiangxi Provincial Emergency Flood Control Headquarters stated that since March 31, storm disasters have begun to affect Jiangxi Province, causing seven deaths and 93,000 people affected as of April 3. Storm disasters refer to natural disasters caused by strong convective weather such as hail, thunderstorms, and tornadoes. The affected area of crops reached 5,700 hectares, with 44 collapsed houses, 192 severely damaged houses, and 4,100 moderately damaged houses, resulting in a direct economic loss of 150 million yuan. On March 31, Nanchang City suddenly encountered heavy rainfall and severe convective weather, causing the blown out of the French windows of a residential building in Nanchang County. Three residents were blown out of the window and died in their sleep. News Report 5 the People's Bank of China announced on April 3 that, in conjunction with the National Financial Regulatory Authority, it has relaxed the automobile loan policy. According to the new policy, financial institutions can determine the loan-to-value ratio for household cars, with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70% for second-hand houses, 70% for purchasing commercial gasoline vehicles, and 75% for electric vehicles. Compared with the previous maximum loan-to-value ratio of 60% for household cars, financial institutions can now determine the loan-to-value ratio themselves, which means that more loans can be obtained. The purpose is to reduce the down payment for consumers and make it easier to purchase vehicles. This move aims to promote the renewal and replacement of automobiles, stabilize and expand automobile consumption. In March of this year, the State Council issued an action plan to promote the renewal and replacement of automobiles, setting a target to increase the volume of second-hand car transactions by 45% to stimulate domestic demand. News Report 6 Country Garden Holdings Company, Limited announced on April 2 that it would postpone the release of its 2023 annual report and its stock was suspended from trading on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that day. The company stated that due to continued industry volatility and a complex operating environment, it was unable to publish its financial report within the stipulated period. According to the Sing Tao Daily, the Hong Kong stock market has experienced a suspension wave, with at least 70 companies suspending trading due to the failure to release financial reports on time, including Rongxin China, Contemporary House, Hengda Holdings, and Dishin China. The main reason why most companies did not release financial reports was that they did not obtain the consent of the auditor, who considered the financial statements problematic and unwilling to sign them, resulting in the inability to publish the financial report. In addition, there are more than 50 companies that have been suspended for a long time on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, reflecting a deteriorating economic environment and more financial problems faced by listed companies. Market observers pointed out that if the economic environment does not improve this year, more companies may suspend trading next year. News Report 7 The Beijing News reported that on April 1, the Zhengzhou Real Estate Management Bureau and five other departments jointly issued a document to promote the acquisition of second-hand houses by urban investment platforms, urging residents to trade in old houses for new ones to stimulate housing demand and boost the real estate market. According to the report, Zhengzhou is a severely affected area in the Chinese property market, with the number of foreclosed houses ranking second only to Chongqing. Under the plan, 
Zhengzhou plans to complete the trade-in of 10,000 housing units this year. The specific operation involves the Zhengzhou Qingfa Group acquiring residents' second-hand houses for use as rental public housing, while residents can buy new houses in the market and enjoy a 30% deed tax subsidy. The eHouse Research Institute pointed out that in the past, the trade-in of housing for new housing in various parts of China was a spontaneous behavior of enterprises. This time, the government's official behavior is combined with the three major projects of affordable housing, urban village renovation, and dual-use public infrastructure renovation. However, the effectiveness of this policy is questionable because Zhengzhou is currently short of funds and burdened with debt, and the debt of urban investment platforms is already high. Although various places in China have successively introduced policies to stimulate the real estate market, the sluggish sales of real estate have not significantly improved. In March this year, the sales of the top 100 real estate companies fell by 46% year-on-year, and investors' and residents' willingness to enter the market was low, while local government land sales revenue also declined. News Report 8 China Securities Journal reported that Chinese-listed banks are strengthening the link between wages and risks, linking risk control with employee wages to recover wages paid to employees. According to the report, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China recovered 43.29 million last year, China Merchants Bank recovered 22 million, and Bohai Bank recovered 23 million, totaling nearly 100 million. Other banks such as the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, Bank of Communications, and China Everbright Bank, although not disclosing specific amounts, are also recovering wages paid to employees. At present, these banks' practices mainly focus on reducing labor costs, including salary reductions and reducing performance bonuses, while also reducing provisions to maintain their profit levels. News Report 9 Voice of America reported on April 3 that a spokesperson for the Philippine National Security Council stated that the Philippines is ready to respond to China's obstruction of supply ships. The Philippine government will take responsive measures to continue to supply the BRP Sierra Madre warship but will adjust the supply method. The Philippine president has signed an order to strengthen maritime security coordination to respond to the serious challenges facing territorial integrity. The report also pointed out that as the conflict between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea continues to escalate, the diplomatic conflict between the two countries is also intensifying, with no signs of any easing. A researcher at the Carnegie Foundation stated in a report on March 29 that the conflict between the Philippines and China is becoming increasingly serious, even more worrying than the Taiwan Strait issue. News Report 10 According to a poll released by the Wall Street Journal on April 3, in the seven swing states where the competition in the U.S. election is most intense, Trump is leading in six states, with a lead ranging from 2 to 8 percentage points. These six states are Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, and North Carolina. The support rates in these states range from 44% to 49%, and Trump's lead is not too much but enough to have an impact. Biden is only leading Trump by three percentage points in Wisconsin. Trump won Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin in the 2016 election but lost to Biden in 2020, leading to these three states returning to Biden. The poll also showed that on individual issues, respondents believe that Biden performs better than Trump in addressing abortion issues, but in terms of the economy, immigration policy, and leadership qualities, respondents believe that Trump is better. News Report 11 According to Forbes' global billionaire list released on April 2, the founder of LVMH Group, Arnaud, ranked first with a wealth of $233 billion. The top three are Arnaud, Tesla's Musk, $195 billion, with some assets mortgaged, and Amazon's Bezos, $194 billion. 
In China's billionaire list, Zhong Shanshan ranks second with a wealth of $24.6 billion, ByteDance Zhang Yiming ranks 27th with $43.4 billion, Pinduoduo's Huang Zheng ranks 33rd with $38.9 billion, and Li Kaxing ranks 38th with $37.3 billion. Taiwan's richest person is Lin Bai Li, founder of Quanta Computer, ranking 190th with a wealth of $11 billion. Forbes pointed out that the total number of global billionaires is 2,781, an increase of 141 from last year, with a total wealth of $14.2 trillion, an increase of $2 trillion from last year. The United States has 813 billionaires, setting a record. China has 473 billionaires, also setting a record, and India has 200. It is worth mentioning that Taylor Swift made her debut on the list for the first time, with a wealth of $1.1 billion. News Report 12 Deutsche Welle reported that the Chinese rock band Hui Chun Dan planned to hold a concert in Taipei on April 2, but they posted on Instagram before departure that they would perform in China's Taiwan, which caused dissatisfaction among Taiwanese netizens and led to the cancellation of the Taipei concert. Hui Chun Dan is an independent rock band founded in Qingzhou, Guangxi in 2016. They rose to fame in 2023 with their self-created song, Flowers, on the variety show, Summer of the Band. Taiwan invited Hui Chun Dan to hold a concert in Taipei and perform at a music festival in Pingdong from April 4 to 6. When Hui Chun Dan posted on Instagram on April 1 that they were going to China's Taiwan, it sparked dissatisfaction among Taiwanese netizens. Some netizens criticized them for not calling Taiwan, China's Taiwan, and said that if it were the other way around, Taiwanese going to China to perform would be cancelled. Hui Chun Dan subsequently deleted the post on Instagram, but this move sparked criticism from Chinese netizens, accusing them of being afraid of Taiwan independence. Despite the controversy, Hui Chun Dan still performed in Taiwan as scheduled. However, during the performance, a large number of Taiwanese people protested, holding up signs and chanting slogans advocating for Taiwan's independence. Due to the controversy caused by Hui Chun Dan's post, the organizers of the Pingdong Music Festival decided to cancel their performance and replace them with other bands. This incident shows that Chinese fans cannot be ignored, and Taiwanese people also have a firm stance.